seated. Good morning, friends. Good morning. My name is Kate Hanch, and I am blessed to serve as one of the associate pastors here at First St. Charles. Welcome to worship on this Mother's Day. Fun fact, Mother's Day was originally created by a Methodist woman named Anna Jarvis at the turn of the 20th century. She honored how her mother worked for peace and unity during and after the Civil War, and her mother also advocated for safer conditions for women and children throughout the world. So when we talk about United Methodist Women next week, we are building on that legacy of Anna Jarvis. However we come today, with whatever feelings we may hold, we take courage in the God who wants all children to know they are safe, welcome, and wanted. We want to make sure to greet everyone who is with us today, both here in person and online, and especially any first-time guests. We thank you for that you are joining us in worship, and we hope that today's worship will help us connect closer with God and with our community of faith. And for any first-time guests, we have a special gift for you. You can stop in the atrium, at, or I'm sorry, in the atrium at the welcome desk after service, and we'd be happy to give that to you. And if you're a first-time guest worshiping with us online, please fill out the connect card, and we'd be happy to mail a gift to you. Reverend Dr. Bart Hildreth will be wrapping up the sermon series, Victory, with Victory Over Evil. He will be talking about imagining a world where all mothers would want their children to live in. And now let us continue to worship through our call to worship. Christ, our Savior, is risen from the dead. Alleluia! The, the joy of Easter still sings in our hearts. Now we know victory over death. Let us praise God in all that we do and say. The God who raised Christ from the dead raises us to new life daily. Let our hearts rejoice at God's redeeming love. Thanks be to God, who gives us victory through Jesus Christ. And as you're able, will you please stand for our opening hymn.
I am Debbie Bartley, honored to serve as one of First St. Charles Associate Pastors. As we continue in worship together, let us continue by praying together. Loving God, we give you thanks for this day and the beauty of your creation. We are grateful you meet us as we are, wherever we are. On this day when we acknowledge motherhood among us, we first give thanks that you are a loving parent to us all. From your being all life was born, and in your bosom all creation is nurtured. You formed us in your image as your children and gathered us together as a mother hen gathers her brood under her wings. You unite us as kindred members of one human family, and we are grateful to be your offspring together. We thank you for the mothers among us and ask that you strengthen them in their daily tasks. We thank you for all motherly figures, grandmothers, aunts, sisters, wives, stepmothers, foster mothers, guardians, babysitters, teachers, health care providers, neighbors, friends, loved ones, and so many others who embody compassion to all. And yet, O oh God, even amid our grateful celebration, some of us have restless spirits, and we are reluctant to name the difficulties of this day. For some of us, this day brings the painful awareness of an inability to conceive biological children. We pray for those who have suffered miscarriages and those fatigued by fertility treatments. Draw your tender spirit near them and remind them that those who struggle with infertility have always shared a special place in your heart. For some of us, this day is one of loneliness and grief, as it is the first Mother's Day without the living presence of a wife or mother, or as a mother who has lost a child. Bring to them a steady restoration of their broken hearts. For some of us, this is a day that draws out ongoing tensions within our personal relationships and family dynamics. We ask for healing from the wounds of our past, a path of forgiveness for wrongs both experienced and committed, and the rebuilding of trust forged in honesty, authenticity, and love. We acknowledge the grief and fear of mothers around the world whose children are in the midst of war and violence. We ask that your comforting presence surround them and give them assurance that you are with their children. Today and every day, we give thanks to you, O oh God, for being a loving parent, mother and father to us all. And we offer our prayers in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, as we pray together now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. My name is Olivia Osterhage, and I'm honored to serve as the Outreach and Marketing Director at First St. Charles. And as many of you already know, I'm sure, this past week was Teacher Appreciation Week. We appreciate everyone for supporting the teaching ministries within our church. From our preschool teachers to the Sunday school and small group leaders, we appreciate everyone for their ministries to all ages, and we are grateful for all of you. And there are many ways that you can support this ministry as well as many others. You can text in your offering, or you can give online or through the app. You can mail in a check, or for those of you, those of you joining us in person this morning, you can place your gifts in the offering plates at the front of the sanctuary. And now, as we listen to the special music, let it connect us more fully with God.
And now let us pray over our gifts. Dear Lord, thank you for your generosity and blessings in our lives. Use us and use our gifts to offer hope and be blessings to others. Amen. And now, as you're able, please stand for the doxology and for the reading of the scripture. Today's scripture comes from Ephesians chapter 6. Finally, be strong in the Lord and the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of the present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, Put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In preparation for today's message. I've been in contact with the Reverend Stephen Gluer, who is a Presbyterian pastor in Oregon and the author of a poem that, uh, for my money, frames well the focus of today's message. Let's face it. Life is messy. All around us, empire is roaring, greed is devouring, and we are left standing in the rubble while the smoke rises from Mary Opal and innocents die. And we hear the sound of lament echoing across the globe. Others wail over minor inconveniences and the rich who oppress the poor, who crush the needy say, bring us another drink. It's enough to drive us to despair. It's enough to make us ponder, where is God? Does love really win? And we wonder, how do we respond? We feel so helpless. It feels so hopeless. And yet... Words linger in our hearts and souls, words that feel untrue and yet we know somehow are true. All things work together for good. Never tire of doing. Yes, we grow weary. Yes, we do stumble and fall. 
but those that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. Times call for boldness. I will not go down despairing. I will not quit. I will not be silent. I have a voice. I cannot perhaps do much, but what I can do, I will do. I will worship. I will pray. I will hold fast to the truth. I will care. I will give. I will serve. I will fight the forces of hate. Not with the tools of hate, not with violence and hate returned, but with the tools of love in the short term. The forces of dominance and greed may prevail, but still I will prevail and persist. I may be a fool, but I will go down loving. It's enough to make us ponder where is God? Will love really win? Today we wrap up our series, message series, Victory, affirming not only that our God in Christ gives us victory over sin, victory over death, but actually, really, victory over all that would take the good that God intends for the world and distort and destroy it. Love really does win. On this Mother's Day, when we imagine the kind of world that the best of mothers would want for us. As we join with mothers the world over in the bold, some might even say foolish, affirmation that evil cannot stand, will not last, and must finally know defeat. Now, I do know and regularly worship with quite a number of folk who see in the devil a literal evil, or who see evil in a literal devil, I should say. Now, I, I don't, I can't speak for all of them, but I can suppose that for at least a good many of them, they're not so wedded to an idea that the devil has literal red skin and horns and hoof feet and a tail in the ways of the early Christians who pretty much plagiarized from the Greek god Pan, nor are they so wedded to an idea that the devil has a pitchfork like the Greek god Poseidon did, but still for at least some of us, maybe a good many of us, the devil is evil incarnate. At the same time, I know and worship regularly with and love quite a number of folk who have pretty much demythologize the devil, preferring instead to see evil not in individual acts of sin, but in the corporate and systemic kinds of forces of all that would stand in opposition to the good that God gave us in creation and the good that God intends and wants and is working for in the world. Either way, in a literal devil or in a demythologized devil, what we can't say 
is that evil should be ignored or that it doesn't exist. Evil exists. Evil persists in our world. To ignore evil, said Martin Luther King Jr., is to become an accomplice with it. Evil is real. Evil exists. Evil persists. And it always, all questions of literalism aside, it always has a human, or should we say, a dehumanizing face. At the same time, We've got to be careful not to demonize others. Our world has pretty much made a god of this kind of binary thinking that divides the world and sees that in, in anyone with whom we disagree, anyone with whom we have differences, someone who is fair game for being called evil. Fundamentalism in all its forms really doesn't need a god to worship as long as it has a devil to fight. We certainly can't avoid these two traps. Ignoring, denying evil on the one hand and demonizing others on the other to find maybe a middle way that really does see and know what we are up against. The New Testament text that we heard a bit ago forthrightly urges those of us who are following Jesus to see ourselves involved in a really serious struggle a cosmic holy war. And so, put on the whole armor of God, we're told. Stand firm for our struggle is against the cosmic powers of the present darkness. Against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. So, take up the whole armor of God, that you may withstand on that evil day and having done all to stand firm. To be a Christian. Doesn't it mean in some sense to be a part of the resistance movement? To stay in the fight for integrity and justice and reconciliation and truth and love and life. But just consider some of what we're up against and what it might take to oppose all this. We live, you and I, in a ceaseless assault of consumerism and its strategy by agitation by constant insinuation that you and I will only be complete when we own more and then own more and then own more. We're under siege daily by impossible images of human bodies and the endless promotion of sex. We're overrun by entertainments designed to make us is it okay if I say stupid? Meanwhile, the wealthy just keep getting richer with their help, with help from their pals in government. The conditions of the poor worsen. Big corporations rule. Governments of every stripe are oozing with lies. We're addicted to waste. Violence is everywhere. And to all of this global corruption and 
evil everywhere, you can add, of course, your own very personal temptations, insecurities, failings, lies, and other sins. And I, of course, can add mine. Now, suppose we really do want to be serious about being a part of the resistance, about standing in opposition to all of this with what will we oppose it? May I tell you what I think has become the weapon of choice for so many of us in our world? Cynicism. But isn't cynicism just a kind of weak resignation to the evils we deplore? As Harry Emerson Fosdick says in a hymn that we're going to sing in a, just a little bit. Isn't cynicism just a kind of giving up? Weak resignation indeed. We need better equipment than just cynicism in order to stay in the struggle and to stand in the fight if we think we're going to make any difference at all. And so the writer of Ephesians tells us we are given the whole armor of God. It's not anything we hauled in to the fight. No siree. Our own defensive mechanisms, our cynicism or naive optimism or fantasies of progress or attempts at dodging the fray by hiding in our own distractions, these are all doomed to fail us and to fail our world. So, we're given God's armor. Truth is like the belt holding it all together and keeping us free. We put on righteousness like a breastplate to guard our heart. The gospel of peace is what we stand in and walk in like shoes. And faith, as big a faith as we can hold, is our shield that guards our spirit and our salvation. We wear it like a helmet guarding our poor little rattled brain. And one more thing. Did you notice that all of these weapons that God gives us are defensive weapons? Every one of them, except one. God gives us one offensive weapon to use in our counter assault against the forces of evil. It's a sword. What sword is this? It's the Word of God. That's right. This word may not appear like much, but our weapon is God's Word. What we have heard God speak, we take into our minds and in our mouth and in the ways that we live and speak it. Speak it to the inhuman and dehumanizing powers. Make your life speak. Cry it. And by all means, sing it. One of my favorite stories from the realm of American folk music is about Pete Seeger. Do you know Pete Singer? Seeger? He was a singer, songwriter, and activist. Raised in a family which he called enormously Christian in the Puritan New England Calvinist tradition. He's remembered for songs like, Where Have All the Flowers Gone? Remember that song? And, If I Had a Hammer. 
and turn, 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 which, by the way, he pretty much plagiarized from the biblical book of Ecclesiastes, just saying that. I wonder if he gave God a royalties on that. I just, okay, that's just me going off squirrel. He was also one of those persons who was responsible for popularizing uh, the, the song, uh, We Shall Overcome. Remember that spiritual? Well, in the 1970s, Seeger was invited to sing in Barcelona, Spain. Francisco Franco's fascist government was still in power. It was one of the last dictatorships left from World War II, but it was in power, yet it was declining. A pro-democracy group was gaining strength, and to prove it, they invited Seeger to come and sing. More than 100,000 people packed that stadium in Barcelona where rock bands played all day long. But it was Seeger they had come to see. As Pete prepared to go on, government officials handed him a list of songs that he was not allowed to sing. Banned songs. Pete studied it mournfully and looked at it and observed that it pretty much looked like his whole set list. But they insisted he must not sing these songs. Pete took the government's list of banned songs and strolled on stage. He held up the paper and said, I've been told not to sing these songs. He grinned at the crowd and said, so I'll just play the chords. Maybe you know the words. They didn't say anything about you singing them. He strummed his banjo to one song after another, and they all sang. A hundred thousand defiant freedom singers breaking the law and resisting the forces of evil in this world, filling the stadium with words that their government did not want them to hear, words that they knew and had sung together in secret circles for years. What could the government do? Arrest 100,000 of them? It had been beaten by the few banjo chords and fame of a man whose songs were on the lips of the whole world. In the face, because you and I are facing it, we're up against it. In the face of all that is unholy, of all that is evil, what can we do? Make your life a voice. Speak God's word. Cry it. And by all means. Sing it. God's blessing on this Mother's Day. As Pastor Bart asked, in the face of all that is evil, what can we do? So my challenge for you and me this week is how are we using our voice against evil? How are we making our life speak and sing against evil? That's what I'll be thinking about this week. How about you?
seated. For those of you who weren't able to be with us in worship or connect with us in worship this last week, uh, we heard the important announcement uh, from Pastor Debbie that as of the end of June, uh, she will be retiring from full-time ministry among us. We also announced uh, last week that uh, we will be hosting a retirement potluck dinner in her honor for Pastor Debbie on June 19th. And we announced that we will be collecting not one but two offerings uh, as a special love offering to give Pastor Debbie. Uh, we will be uh, collecting an offering, one offering for everyone who wants to send Pastor Debbie to Disney, and a second offering for everyone who wants to bring her back. Do you want to bring her back? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you will find in the pews available up here, uh, if you're worshiping in person, an envelope. Uh, and I do want to point out that the envelope makes clear at the very bottom that checks should be made out to Pastor Debbie and not to the church because that uh, affects some things related to taxes. Uh, so if you could, uh, and if you are so inspired, uh, we would appreciate uh, your participating in that way. Uh, let's send her to Disney. Let's bring her back. It's all in good fun and a way to, I think, express our grief at this important change for her and in our church's life, but also for our gratitude for her ministry. Today, I'm wondering, though, if you would like to hear what's next for our church's ministry. Would you like to hear? Because, quite frankly, I've been just bursting at the seams wanting to tell you all, and it's been hard to keep it inside. That's all to say. It is my joy to announce to you that we will be reconfiguring our staff in some new ways with a new position, a brand new position, that we are calling our Director of Connectional Ministries. This will be a full-time position covering many of the same things that were in Pastor Debbie's portfolio, along with uh, some responsibilities for creating new pathways for connection to our church. That having been said, it is my great joy to introduce to you our new con Director of Connectional Ministries, our own Katie Rome. <laughs> Katie is currently the Executive Director of the Sparrow's Nest Ministry in St. Peter's. You may know of the Sparrow's Nest. As she brings to our staff a whole bunch of different skills and training for starting new ministries. Uh, Kate, uh, Katie, this is going to be a problem for me, I know. Kate and Katie. Katie will begin June 1st, so she and Pastor Debbie will have a little overlap time. And yes, because this has been expressed to me as a huge concern, in addition to helping lead worship, she will continue to sing in our choir. Please join me, I know you will, in welcoming Katie and letting her know that you're excited for this new opportunity for us to be together in ministry. Uh, yeah. But there's more. Today I'm pleased to announce that starting July 1st, our bishop will be appointing another associate pastor here. May I introduce to you the Reverend Dr. Kate Hanch. Many of you know Kate has been on staff with us, but she will be, starting July 1st, she will be beginning her provisional time as a part of having her credentials recognized and toward becoming 
uh, a, a United Methodist elder. I trust you'll let her know how pleased you are. Uh, yeah. But that's not all. I'm having so much fun with this. Today, it is my joy to introduce to you another new position that we are creating on our staff, a new, very part-time minister of pastoral care. May I introduce to you the Reverend Debbie Bartley. After taking the whole month of July away, Pastor Debbie will start in August in a very part-time role assisting with weddings, funerals, and hospital visitation. While we understand her need to open a new chapter in her life, you know, that one called retirement, uh, we're certainly glad to be able to uh, have this continued partnership with her. Would you offer your blessing by welcoming her to this new role. And did you think we were done? No, because starting May 29th, thanks to some nifty grant writing by Pastor Kate and some monies made available to us by the Missouri Conference, uh, we are we will be having a new summer youth and children's intern. She couldn't be here today, but here's a brief video introduction. Hi church, my name is Nicole DeCoster and I grew up in this church and I graduated three years ago and I'm so glad to be coming back to serve as your children and youth intern this summer. All right, Nicole. Nicole is one of our own. And we're welcoming her home. Friends, this is a lot to take in. But it's exciting. And I, for one, am just overjoyed at getting to see what God is going to do among us next. God is working among the people of First Church, and it is just flat-out fun my sisters and brothers in Christ. Will you stand for benediction? On this day in which we do honor mothers and the world that they deserve to have, you are equipped with the whole armor of God, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes for proclaiming the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the word of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Stand firm. Stand firm. The world is now too dangerous for anything less. For evil cannot, must not win. It will not win. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Amen.